Hi there, my name is Tara Cheyenne Friedenberg, and I'm the artistic director of Tara Cheyenne Performance here on the West Coast on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish people. So my name is Melissa Dushak, and I'm the general manager of the Vancouver Cantata Singers, and I'm happy to be working on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. My name is Eric Rice Miller. I am the executive director of the Community Arts Council of Vancouver, and I am speaking to you from Chatlitch in the Shishal Nation lands known as uh, Seashelt on the Sunshine Coast. Hello everybody, my name is Ashley Cook. I am an actor and emerging digital logistics coordinator. I'm currently located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Métis. Hi, my name is Tia Maria Swarovski. I am a Canadian multidisciplinary figurative artist. I work out of my studio located in Kelowna, British Columbia, and I respectfully acknowledge that I am working on and creating work on the traditional and unceded territory of the Silix Okanagan people. Hello, my name is Amy Amanti and I'm an accessibility consultant and I connected through Digital Ladders on the unceded ancestral and occupied territories of the Squamish, the Musqueam and the tsleil peoples. Hi, I'm Sue Bealy. I uh, live and work and was born on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil here on the west side of Turtle Island. And I am the co-designer, co-facilitator of Digital Ladders with uh, Robert Wimet here. Yeah, this idea of digital ladders, these rungs, this was Sue's idea from the beginning that whatever your experience, there was an entry point for you into digital ladders to learn more about digital. So you could come in, for instance, with absolutely no digital knowledge whatsoever into a three day workshop. And after those three days, leave there with a really clear understanding of how digital projects are put together, how they're planned, terminology, people involved, timelines, that kind of thing. Or you could come into a one hour, say, a Ask Me Anything drop-in session, just to find out more about a particular topic. I mean, I think this is a part of the fun of the whole thing, was having somebody who's a puppeteer sitting next to a Scottish dance teacher, you know, next to somebody who's a gallery, a museum person, to somebody who's in theater. The whole goal here, to demystify digital. And to do that, we bring in lots of experts and consultants, people who really know their field, but also are really good at explaining how it works and why you might be wanting to use that technology or those particular tools. And these people make it approachable and understandable. I do think everybody leaves wanting more or wanting some, the next thing. So I think we've primed and provoked them and hopefully done in a way that made them feel very safe from coming out of like possibly a little bit of a digital hesitancy or digital dormancy. It came at a great time because we were experimenting with a few online offerings and learning as we went. But we knew that we wanted to take our festival, needed to take our festival fully online. Uh, that was a huge pivot for us. And so as far as doing a live stream, as doing an online exhibition, supporting the artists, we just felt like this would be the perfect time to learn more about how to pull this off in a, in a really good way. I needed to learn how to transition my art to that virtual marketplace as well. So that's why Digital Ladders seemed like an ideal opportunity for me to take advantage of because I have very, very minimal experience when it comes to the digital world. And my skill level is just at a very basic level. And so I wanted to learn about all of these new platforms and new resources and ways to show your art. First thing I did out of acting school was I did a theater show and then the pandemic hit and then I had no idea what I was, what I was gonna do with my life. Um, but one of the instructors at my school, she is the artistic director of Raven Spirit Dance. She's a supporter of me, knowing I come out there, I just graduated. She extended the offer to me to be this digital logistics coordinator. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not a digital logistics coordinator. And she, <laughs> she signed me up for uh, the digital ladders program so I could gain some skill sets. One of the other key principles about digital ladders is that we want to remove the technology as a hurdle to learning. We don't want to have the technology get in the way of learning about technology. 
And this year with all the courses being delivered remotely, we wanted to have the same approach. So we spent a lot of time before each workshop working with each participant individually to get them prepared, what we call an onboarding process, so that when they showed up at the workshop, they already understood the tools we'd be using and those tools would not get in the way of their experience. One of the other key aspects of Digital Ladders, the thing Sue always says, is that everybody teaches, everybody learns. And we learned a ton from our participant, Amy Amanti. Now, Amy was there with Vocal Eye Descriptive Arts, and Amy is legally blind. I have a very profound sight loss. I have about 2% uh, sight level. Um, I only have sight in one eye, and, and I have no central vision. So it can make seeing things and reading things very challenging. And so I do have some assistive technology, but it doesn't work over the Zoom platform. So you know, you go into these environments and you feel like, okay, if they're doing a screen share, are they gonna think about this in advance? Or am I gonna have to say, whoa, stop, I can't access, and then teach them how to act, you know, how to how to make it accessible for me. And and I I don't want to be the burden. I wanna just I wanna just enjoy the experience like everybody else. So that's always my my worry. But I was pleasantly surprised um, when I showed up on the first day that uh, I had been considered and my experience had been considered and how I would participate had been considered. And that was um, a really pleasant space to be in. What I was most impressed with was the safe space <laughs> that was created immediately. The, the, the feeling of friendliness and support and just, you know, safety and that we're all here at our different levels of comfort and knowledge, et cetera, with digital and our different needs is, is, is uh, also. And the fact that that could be done online is in three days, the first workshop was three days of Zoom calls. That was really impressive. It was so smoothly run that it felt like I was there in person by the end of the three days because the tech was so well thought out and how to work with the tech and take advantage of the tech like over Zoom and to have an onboarding process with Garnet, which was really great because it made me feel safe for the tech. It made the classroom more re feel, feel reliable. It felt like we had a really strong container for the work. Well, it was, I mean, in this, you know, COVID time, it was really nice to just simply be in, uh, in not sharing space, but sharing time uh, with all these artists in different parts of the, the world of performance and the world of disseminating uh, art online and live. So that was just, I find that really great because it's community. I'm looking back at those notes and seeing, oh, I'd like to try to do that. I'd like to incorporate that. This is super helpful for the second year. So that was learning that we could, that we could integrate and carry forward. It wasn't just a one-time benefit. So we're, we're really grateful that it happened. And, and I can see there's a lot of um, depth to what's possible. It was essential that the coaches were there to say, "Well, this is how to how to make that decision. Here's the here's the way to make that decision: is if you do this, this, and if you do this, this, and you know." All of these opportunities, these professional development opportunities that I've been participating in, like digital ladders, are only allowing me to level up and um, will will allow me to show my art in a whole new way that I that I wasn't able to before. That was a space that I had not no knowledge of before the what comes before what in the process. And so that was super helpful in thinking about my own work as an artist and how I might assemble a project that could be shared in that way. It's been amazing to learn on the job since Digital Ladders. And now I'm an actor who does digital program coordination. <laughs> I will say like the workshop really like clarified for me what I need to do with my work. So I felt like that was that was like my biggest takeaway. And just like the 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 many voices that were sharing um, throughout the workshop. So it wasn't like one person. It was many people. And so like that reality that this does it takes many people and many uh, specific expertise to accomplish this work and to find that we are kind of creating, we're kind of creating new modalities for sharing work and that actually changes the work 
and how can we embrace that and continue to be creative together?